many of us dimming our shine. We are holding ourselves back and we're afraid of putting ourselves out there and claiming what we truly want because of those internal narratives and generational programs that have been handed down. And the work is about rewriting those programs and claiming what you actually want. Welcome to the Deja Vu podcast, where we believe that living a life of magic can be the default. Join us each week as we playfully and authentically dive into the mysteries of life and explore what it truly means to be human. From spirituality, wellness, and all things to boo, we don't hold anything back. So without further ado, let's let the magic unfold. So before we get into today's episode, I'm going to quickly mention today's sponsor. Today's sponsor of this podcast is Becoming Prosperous, which is a four-week online self-guided course aligning you with what it truly means to live a prosperous life. Now, what I absolutely adore about this offering is that it is guided by one of my best friends, Azria Becker, who has been a guest on the podcast multiple times. And she has single-handedly been a massive catalyst in what has supported me to align my life from being completely broke to living a life of prosperity and abundance. And so what she has done is action-packed this four-week program with all of her codes, her wisdom, and her guidance that has supported me in my life to allow you to be able to tap into this wellspring of wisdom from the comfort of your own home. So if you want to check out the link it, it, in the show notes here on YouTube and also on all podcasting audible platforms. And without further ado, welcome to today's episode. Hello, beautiful humans, and welcome back to another episode of Deja Vu Podcast. I'm really excited about today's conversation. I just had a realization just before um, we started filming that this majestic human hasn't been on the podcast yet. And I'm kind of like a little shocked about that, but also really excited that it's happening now in real time. Mm. Um, Lucas Mack has been somebody that has woven into my existence in the most effortless slash impactful way possible. He, just by his presence alone, has reminded me to ask the deeper questions that not all is as it seems. And he has this remarkable ability at weaving in spaces that you would not expect to find him. And yet bringing the medicine and the heat and claiming the timeline of magic as the default in spaces that need it the most, while also not needing to prove anything, but through his embodiment has effortlessly allowed him to support high impact individuals to ask the deeper question and go on the healing journey. He is also the partner of Hello Weston, who we just had on the podcast as well. Um, and these two beloveds have been weaving for quite a long time and have decided to create healing spaces, specifically utilizing the tool of breath work to allow to transmute suppressed emotions that sit in the body with a whole array of healing tools and modalities with his hands, with speaking, how he holds space, being that which is needed in every moment for whatever it is that's being transmuted, while also going through his own hero's journey of what it truly means to be somebody that has been raised in a limited environment with a lot of weight on his shoulders to then trans go through his own journey, transmute that, and then utilize his greatest challenge to be his service to the world. And so for me, I believe that a true trust, a test of character is not what happens to you in life, but it's what you do with it. And Lucas Mack is the living expression of an emotional alchemist, turning what once was led into gold and then activating it to be of service to the whole. Mm. This is somebody that I feel... Um, gets me on the unspoken realms and the magical dimensions. And recently I had an experience with Lucas where we were co-facilitating a breathwork experience at Fit for Service uh, in Sedona. And he came over to me and he sat next to me and he goes, um, Blue, you want to open up um, the the pillars of light? I'll go stand on the other side. And I was like, oh, that's my bro speaking my language, yo. And like, it, it was like this unspoken thing about what that even means. And he goes to the other side of the room and we both use our bodies as a pillar to call in unconditional love and owning unconditional love and all that's ready to be transmuted into unconditional love. And I saw myself turn into this like pillar of light. And it was like, it was almost like a selenite stick. I felt mm, like excellent. and then I open my eyes and I look across the way and you're doing exactly the same thing and for me she's my friend these are the people that I fuck with yo mm. <laughs> like that 
can play in all of the dimensions. And, and I put emphasis on the word play because the, as deep as the work is that you are doing and weaving in the world, there's a mm. lightheartedness and a cosmic joke that is wrapped up in the depth in which you go. And so, mm. um, Lucas Mack, I'm so happy that you are here on the Deja Vu podcast. Today. Thank you. That was like the most lit intro ever. We out here. First of all, I want to say thank you for having me on here. It's a blessing to be here. And I hope this conversation can motivate and inspire everyone watching. So let's get it. Mm, perfect. I mean, you are inspiring just like by the essence of who you are. Also, thank before you. we came on the podcast, somebody mentioned that we're both brown from the crown down. Mm. So there was an unconscious agreement that we would both be brown today, mm. um, bringing in that sacred earth medicine. Yeah. Um, as we navigate some wild terrain mm. of the weird experience of being human. Mm. Well, yeah, the human experience is lit, right? It's, a, <laughs> it's probably one of the most wildest journeys that you could take as energy, as spirit coming into the human form, being birthed into this reality, forgetting everything, and then having to figure things out as you go. <laughs> It's wild, right? But we're here. This is it. <laughs> the thing that makes it a little bit less crazy for me is the humans that I, like, mm. like my relationship with you and, like, being able to look over at you and be like, mm. I don't really actually know, truly, what the fuck is going on here mm. in the grand scale of the um, expansive nature of existence. And mm. yet, simultaneously, when I look across the way and I see my brother opening up that, like, pillar mm. of light alongside me in an unspoken agreement of what that even means, mm. it softens the intensity of being mm. human and it makes it so worth living. Mm. And something that I've just noticed within you is very similar to your partner, and I think this is why you're such a powerful combination in, in your union, is that you are both high, highly sensitive individuals, um, navigating pretty dense environments and bringing a lot of light and awareness into those spaces. Mm. And I think that this conversation is so ripe that there could be multiple episodes on it, but I would love to hear a part of your journey mm but feels like the most important to share mm. around what your your hero's journey has looked like to get to a place of service mm. when starting from a place of essentially turning the lead that was presented into gold and then that gold to be of service. Just to give a little bit of context of like mm. how you have, what do you have had to go through to mm. be the man that you are today? Mm. Well, yeah, I'm from New Zealand and growing up for me in New Zealand, was full of trials and tribulations. I guess from a young age, I had a really negative perception of myself and I was highly sensitive. And like Hella, I was navigating feeling everyone else's emotions and not knowing what was mine and what wasn't. And I remember from an early age suffering from panic attacks and anxiety. And I remember mum rushing me off to the hospital or the emergency center where they would hook me up to you know, oxygen ventilator machines so I could breathe again. And just not knowing how to navigate that and not knowing what that was, was quite overwhelming as a kid. And I guess it was split in my household because mum was really sensitive and nurturing and extremely loving. She's like a little elemental fairy and she's oh. into crystals and healing and oh, I didn't know that. affirmations and, you know, peace and quiet and nature and she loves trees so that was always like present for me and then dad was the opposite he was more ruthless he rode motorcycles he grew marijuana which was illegal in New Zealand he was getting into fights he was suffering from addiction and depression and he was very loud and boisterous and aggressive so there was you know an interesting dynamic growing up in my household where from an early age, I was really aware of dad's suffering and dad's pain. And I didn't know how to cope with that. And I didn't know how to support him. And I didn't know what to do with that. And when I was seven years old, he decided that he had had enough and he ended up taking his life. He shot himself in the stomach, which is one of the most painful and slow ways to die. And that was a really intense and overwhelming experience for me as a seven-year-old because one, I didn't know how to even process that. And two, even though my father was aggressive and violent and all these things, he was never that to me. He represented safety to me, you know, and he was 
very much a pillar of me feeling protected and safe within this human experience. He always had my back, you know. So when he left, I felt abandoned by him and I felt like it was my fault because if he had loved me more, then he wouldn't leave, right? That's how I thought. I internalized it through my own perception of me not being enough or not being worthy of him staying. So that was really painful, right? And I already had a negative relationship with myself and that kind of sent me into deep waters and I remember after the, that experience, every day I'd look in the mirror and I would just beat myself up and I'd tell myself really negative things like everything negative that I could find and perceive about myself, I was telling myself that on the daily. And I had no idea of the damage that I was doing to myself or the impact I was having you know, on my psyche and on my mind and on my body by doing that. That went on through growing up through my adolescent years and teenage years and into an adult, where that self-destructive mindset was really running the show. Mm -hmm. And it got to a point where I guess that I realized that, that I was exactly on my father's path and I was faced with a decision, right, which was either self-destruct or choose a different path. And I chose a different path, but that did not come easy. But that's the choice that I made. And I'm so glad that I made that choice because that's led me to now, you know, have the privilege of supporting thousands of people all around the world to do the same, you know. So it's been a journey of taking the darkness lightly. It's lightly. It's been a journey of giving myself permission to feel it, to heal it, to go within, to surrender to the darkness and unwind old padding, patterns and conditioning and set myself free from all these different experiences that I went through, my father leaving the planet was just one experience that I had. There was many different experiences growing up as an empath that I felt were too much, too fast, too soon, what we could consider traumatic, that I had to bring healing to. And, you know, that was an intense journey, but it, it led me to be the person that I am today and to be able to connect with people on that deeper level because I know pain you know, and that's such a beautiful thing now because it allows me to have that empathy for others who struggle with themselves and who struggle in life and to be able to support them, to be their own healers, mm -hmm. to feel it, to heal it. So, There's been moments where you and Hella have always been safe places for me. It's been consistently like that since the day I met you both. Mm -hmm. Of course, time has allowed the deepening of the friendship um, however, there's been times where I've been like confused or broken or sad or just like giving you an update where it's like really painful. And there's been moments where you've just, you, you, for the most part, you sit in silence and you listen extraordinarily well. And then when you're ready, you give me like laser accurate feedback slash shift of perspective to allow me to integrate what's happening from a more compassionate place mm -hmm. while not gaslighting or overriding my experience but also if I'm only seeing 180 you have the ability to see 360 and then bring the medicine into that and I feel mm -hmm. like this is a byproduct of a choice that you made to go I can either have what's happened in the past make me bitter or I can alchemize it into actually being able to genuinely help people alleviate their own suffering through mm. a shifted perspective. And it's such a pure medicine that you bring to the space mm. because ultimately in life, we're all dished some really shitty cards. Mm. Shitty from one perspective, but also like really challenging and really intense. And for a seven-year-old boy to have to process his father killing himself is not a small initiation. Mm. Now, a lot of people could respond to the world being really angry and hating the world mm. or to turn it into medicine, which ultimately has led to service now, which I believe you are very successful at what you do because of the depth of empathy in which you're willing to go. Mm. I'm curious, <clears throat> you talk about during those times when you would look in the mirror and it was just like everything you could think of that you hated about yourself was the narrative that was running the show. Mm -hmm. 
Do any of those voices still make their way into your experience now from a place of self-awareness? And I'm asking this because on a daily basis, those voices still infiltrate my experience mm. to the point where I'll be like picking at my body or picking at how much work I am or I'm not doing or that I should have been more accomplished or I could have been a mother by now. Whatever it is, that's the, the story that's running. It's still from a place of self-awareness, from a place of deeply on the path of healing. I call it the golem thoughts, which mm. are like, ah, my precious, yeah. how could anybody love me? Yeah. Do they come into your consciousness? And if so, how do you navigate your way through them from a self-aware place? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, I guess I experienced that duality and that pain of projecting all the negativity onto myself, uh, you know, through my daily practice of being in the mirror and practicing what we call could call black magic, right, on myself, unwillingly knowing that's what I was doing. That was so extreme to the point where that was going to lead me to self-destruct and I was on that path, which meant, you know, I'd either take my own life or find another way to take myself out. That was so extreme that I had to make a complete shift, which meant experiencing an ego death of sorts. So today, those voices do not control the show. They don't run the show in any way. But I am aware that there is still an aspect of me that can judge myself or there can be an inner critic or there can be a part of me that is maybe in a, in a conflict with where I am now and where I want to go and who I want to become, right? But I don't let that voice run the show. I'm aware of it. If it comes in, I bring unconditional love ruthlessly to all parts of me in any given moment. And I've got really good at being my own best friend and being my own coach and being my own mentor because I had to, to survive. I had to. So that relationship of really showing up for myself and having my own back came out of necessity, came out of a trauma response. And there's a part of the brain called the reticular activating system, right? And it's a filtering system between our conscious and unconscious mind. And its job is to process information. So what it will often do is it will focus on finding more of what we put our attention on. So if we're constantly looking at the negative, it will find more of the negative, Right? But if, again, if we train ourselves to really harness and look at the positive and to focus on that, then that part of our brain will find more of that in our reality. So I had to really work on retraining my brain and retraining my mind to focus on all the positive things relentlessly as a daily practice through mirror work, through affirmation, through just reprogramming that part of my, my mind in a daily practice of just living and existing. And if I found myself comparing myself to other people and lowering my vibe, I had to be on that ruthlessly. And that's what I practiced for so many years to be able to shift that pattern and create that pattern interference. But don't get me wrong, we're talking like <laughs> years of dedication to make this happen, but it came out of necessity for my own survival. Something that I want to highlight in what you just said is the consistency piece and the patience. Because if there's been a narrative that's been running the show for the majority of our lives, mm. then that is not going to shift overnight. No. But it is a requirement to recognize if I continue on this path, I will create a self-destructive pattern, whether even just internal narrative or even the physical actions that are a vibrational match to the internal dialogue. And what I mean by that is going, okay... I wake up in the morning and I say that I'm unworthy or I'm less than and I look in the mirror and I, I pick at the things I don't like about myself. So I'm more likely to go about my day and do things that are self-destructive, mm. like, for example, smoke cigarettes. Mm. Smoking cigarettes is actually not healthy for us, for our lungs um, and for our overall vitality. This is just science. Now, the action has to be a thought first. So if the thought then says, well, what's the point of living or I'm unworthy, then the action that is actually not healthy is mm. a direct vibrational match to the narrative that's playing, which keeps us kind of like in a loop of, of low vibrational um, self-destructive behaviors. Yeah. So ultimately it gets to a certain point where the self-destruction is, is so deep that it's like a question between living and dying then that was the the straw that broke the camel's back to actually create a new narrative. 
How long has it been for you since you decided I'm not going to stay on this trajectory to the point where you are now? How many years of rewriting and, and, and work has it taken for you to start to create a new default where you actually are the healer, shaman, medicine man of your own experience? Mm, yeah, minimum of 10, 10, 10 years of inner work, closer to 15. So recognizing that this is not a uh, season this isn't just like oh I'm gonna heal myself for a month no. and then I'll go right back into the old mm -mm. pattern it's it's a life's work it's a life work life's work and it's the realization that you are the co-creator you are the director of your own movie and you are the main character but that's a choice to step out of your conditioning out of your internal programs out of you know the parts of you that are holding you back from allowing yourself to step in and play the game fully and to own what you actually want because many of us are dimming our shine. Mm -hmm. We're holding ourselves back and we're afraid of putting ourselves out there and claiming what we truly want because of those internal narratives and generational programs that have been handed down. And the work is about rewriting those programs and claiming what you actually want, right? And there's a part of that where we have to give ourselves permission to question everything, question our own beliefs, question what we've been holding on to, question what we've been through in the sense of what am I still holding on to that is no longer in reson resonance and is no longer serving me and is actually getting in the way of what I actually fucking want. Mm. And I think that takes a lot of courage because it's really about stepping outside of the comfort zone mm. and facing off with the part, more primitive parts of us that are keeping us safe and giving ourselves permission to step into the unknown, which can be extremely scary for a lot of people because it means not having it all figured out, letting go of control. And many of us are creatures of comfort, right? And we just love to be in control. And when you step into being a co-creator, meaning you're co-creating your reality with life, with the universe, with God, there's an element of really having to focus on what you can control and that's your part and then letting go of what you can't control mm -hmm. and that's God's part, right? Mm -hmm. And many of us get it so twisted because we're trying to control the things that we can't control and that creates all kinds of sankaras and misery and we're just constantly unconsciously creating these drama and narratives and like you said keeping ourselves stuck looping in the same old behaviors that don't really serve us but there's a level of safety that comes with those old behaviors even though it's not ideally who we want to be and it's not what we want there is a level of safety in that so when we step beyond that when we move beyond that we're stepping outside of our own way to play a bigger game right to get off the sidelines and actually claim what we want and I think when we when we do that that is one of the greatest gifts that we can give ourselves and also the people around us because we start to fucking own our authenticity. We start to own who we are and what we want and we're not afraid to shine, even if it means making other people uncomfortable, which it will. It's not an if, it's a when, right? Yeah. When you fully step in and share yourself in a way, specifically because you and Hala are sharing yourself in a public way. You have social media platforms. You are interacting with individuals that have large impact. It's exposing you both and the work that you're doing. And also I felt like a claiming in both of you that this is just part of your path. You're meant to be seen in this life and that is not for everybody. Um, what I, I'm curious about, and I also, uh, my questions all, Pretty much just because I have a deep resonance of what you're saying, but like, what has your journey been around being a highly sensitive person, aka an empath, aka somebody that feels all of the realms, not just the physical ones or the mm. ones that are picked up with the five senses, and being in the public eye? Mm. Because, like you said just now, the more you share, the more eyes that are on you. Not if, when the people that are triggered by yeah. your expression are going to present and they're going to be more and more and more because the ratio, maybe if it's like nine to two or nine to one from people that absolutely adore the content and then there's one mm. to like people that are like, 
fuck you, man. Yeah. If it, if that the ratio or if the amount of eyes go from ten thousand followers to a hundred thousand followers to mm. ten million followers, the ratio is going to go with it. So what was one is now a significantly bigger volume of individuals. So mm. what is your journey with being so transparent, so vulnerable, so like it's like Hanuman who has like his his heart like his chest open and his heart pumping inside and being like this to the world while maintaining a sensitivity because it's your very sensitivity that I've watched you help in breathwork sessions people move some really dense energy because you can sense it because you're such a sensitive person so it's a niche avenue that you and Hella are walking Mm -hmm. it's highly sensitive individuals while also being exposed to many people yeah I guess it's the realization that not everyone's going to fuck with you. Not everyone's going to fuck with you when you start putting yourself out there and you start shining. Not everyone is going to be your cheerleader. And that's cool, right? Because, (laughs) hey, we're all different and we all have a different energy and a different vibe to bring and not taking it personally. So when I get hundreds of messages of people sending me hate, of people trying to pull me down, of people projecting their own judgments, fears, limitations, and negativity negativity onto me. It's that realization that that is their own projections from their own shadow, from their own unintegrated parts, and a realization that it doesn't matter what people think about me. It matters about how I feel within myself and my connection to my own inner alignment So it's none of my business to take on board other people's judgments and projections and narratives, right? That's none of my business what they think about me. But what is my business is my own direct alignment and the way that I'm showing up and my relationship to life, to the universe, to God, that's all of my business. And that's no one else's business because no one else is having that experience, you know? So that's for me a daily practice of tuning in being authentic, speaking my truth and taking off the masks, right? I'm I'm not here for everyone and I know that. Look at me, like I'm a highly tattooed individual, a sensitive creative that's on a mission to support other people, to let go of stress, tension, unprocessed emotions and trauma. A lot of people don't get it. They don't understand it. And I'm cool with that. And I'm not here for everyone. But the people that are, I am here for, fuck with me because I am real and I am authentic and it's a felt sense, right? I'm not here to play games. I'm here on a mission and I'm only here on this planet for a short amount of time and I'm here to create impact. So I don't give a fuck about other people's judgments. I just got no time for it, (laughs) y'all. Yes, I'm like so like act up right now while hearing you speak. I'm like, oh my God, you're so right. (laughs) It's really really inspiring. Um, Also, based off of, the majority will judge based off of physical appearance and what you just said about being like a highly tattooed individual. Mm -hmm. How do you, um, how, what is your experience like around judgment based off of physical appearance? Like, Mm -hmm. for example, I know people that, no names, but that Mm -hmm. um, like are so triggered by tattoos Mm -hmm. and believe that it's like a class thing, you know? and that like, it's it's horrible for me to even say this, mm. but like that the original people that got tattoos were criminals, mm. right? Or like the lower class. And um, by the way, this is not my experience. This is not my truth, but mm. being in a flesh puppet that can pull up the triggers of these like unsolved um, uh, issues within oneself around class and judgment and less than what is your experience on the inside of an individual that I mean I'm pretty sure you don't have any space besides your immediate face left to tattoo right like yeah. you're pretty covered yeah yeah well this was once my armor this was once my armor this was my protection that kept me safe this was my protection that closed down my heart so I didn't have to feel And I was like, back up, back up. So it was almost like the intention was kind of like as a barrier. To create distance, to create space. So Mm. I've been judged my whole life. That's Mm. nothing new to me. And 
I'm not afraid of people's judgments because I've always been different. Even before I was so heavily tattooed, I was so different. I thought different. My perception of reality was different. I was always asking the deep questions. That was where my mind went and my awareness was just tapped into the unseen realms. No one could understand it, right? If they didn't have that perception and their own experience themselves. So I've always been judged. I've always been different. That is not an issue for me because it's a filtering system, right? It yeah. filters out the people who don't fuck with me. And that's cool. <laughs> I love the term, by the way, fuck with me. Yeah. Like, you think they fuck with you or they don't? Well, it's just how it is, right? <laughs> it's just how it is. Yeah, it is. You know, and the people that do fuck with you, <laughs> man, when you're your authentic, this goes out to every single person watching this. When you decide to be your authentic self and you take off any masks that you've been wearing and you just step into being who you truly are, the people that you draw in who will fuck with you <laughs> are going to be so loyal to you and they're going to appreciate what you have to say so much because you become a voice for them, right? You become a voice and a permission slip for those who haven't yet gathered that courage within themselves to do the same. You get to be a permission slip for those to speak their truth in the face of all adversity and everything that they might be experiencing that's telling them that it's not safe to speak up, that it's not safe to be your authentic self, that you will get judged, that you will get ridiculed, that people won't accept you. You get to speak up and be a voice for that and just say, hey, look at me. I'm doing it. You can do it too. Mm -hmm. So it's a beautiful thing when people judge me because that, that mm -hmm. filtering system is very real. I know where they're at within, they're showing me where they're at. And I don't judge them back, but I take notice. I'm like, okay, that's where you're at. So that's a clear indicator that you are not someone that I personally feel inspired to be around mm -hmm. just because it's not a vibrational match. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Thank you for showing me where you're at. That's a really beautiful perspective on it and being able to, and I think that's why you are like a, a, such a great alchemist, emotional alchemist, because you're seeing what could have been something as a reason why someone wouldn't even share their truth. And you're seeing it as an opportunity to be more of you and ultimately everything's subjective to whatever story you place on it. And the stories you are placing on it is enabling you to be able to extract the gold and to say, thank you for the lesson. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you said, you know, like, I'm not judging you for judging me. <laughs> but I'm witnessing I'm just, you judging me. Huh? I'm witnessing you judging me, but I'm not judging you back. So there was this meme that I, because I, my new love language is memes, basically. Um, and uh, there was this meme that was like, it was like me watching you judge me, me judging you, judging me. <laughs> and I was like... I relate to that because there's times when like I'll see a comment online that is just so shitty <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you must have a real shit life to have to go online and write these like judgmental comments about a complete stranger. And now here I am judging you, judging me, judging you, judging yeah. me. Yeah. And it was like this like perpetuating. And then eventually over a period of time, my higher self will be like, move aside, bitch. Mm. I'm not going to judge you. Yeah. Because really at the root of it, what it is that you need is a little more love. Mm. Actually more than most, if that's what the pain is. And Jay Shetty yeah. talked about, if you pick up an orange and you squeeze it, orange juice comes out. If you pick up someone full of pain and you squeeze them, pain comes out. <laughs> you know, it's so like, true. it's like, oh! And so, so that is really ultimately the root of it. And simultaneously, how what has been your relationship around when you do be judged, you end the cycle as opposed to being like, mm. oh, I'm going to judge you for judging me now, bitch. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you open people up into, you invite them into a different space, right? Because when you start shining, you will trigger people who are not ready to claim their own light yet and shine, right? You will trigger their lack of inability to claim what they want for themselves and to own their own authentic truth. Mm -hmm. And when you do that and people judge you so harshly, it's coming from their own projection of how they're feeling, their own pain and insecurities within, right? So when you can shine light on that and bring unconditional love to that, it neutralizes it. Mm. 
Mm. It neutralizes it because the other way is to to react back, right? And that's coming from the ego. And when we do that, then we're inviting in all of the bullshit that comes with operating from that level, right? The, the ego back and forth games. And it's a, no one wins. No one wins when we play those games. And we've all like, been there and we've all done it. Do you like playing it out in your mind though, just for a moment? Like like I have like this um, very aggressive praying mantis as part of my ego, mm. <laughs> my alter ego. And I see the comment and I'm like, and then I settle back mm. and then I respond accordingly from my higher self. Mm. But I let my like ego kind of just like chime in for a second and be like, oh, I would fuck you up. Mm. But I will not. Yeah. Today, I don't play I that game life. anymore. I used to play that game because that's the world I came from, right? Like toxic masculine, very egotistical. Fighting was a big part of how I grew up. That was just a part of my reality. So like beef was real. <laughs> but on, I don't beef online. I don't beef online. I, I've got mm. no time and energy for that. I want to create generational wealth and create impact on this planet to the highest degree that I can possibly, you know, create that while I'm here for the short, limited amount of, t- amount of time in this physical vehicle. So mm. I do not beef online. I will delete <laughs> people's comments. I love your And I will like man. block people from being in my online space if they bring their negativity and bullshit to me because... That's not what I'm about. And I won't react emotionally to it, but I will keep it moving. And they will not get to experience all the gifts that I have to offer. So it's a lose for them because (laughs) I'm open to having a positive conversation and I'm open to talking about certain subject matters and kind of, you know, I know that I don't have the answers and I know that I'm not here to always get it right. There's many mistakes that I'm going to make along my journey. So I don't claim to have all the answers and I'm willing to have that conversation when I get things wrong and apologize for my own mistakes and stuff like that. But if you unconsciously bring just drama and negativity into my space, then I don't Mm. fuck with that. (laughs) Mm. I have like a, a thought of like, there is no timeline ever available where I will lay on my deathbed reflecting on my life and go, I'm so happy I spent all that time arguing with strangers on Instagram. Mm. I'm so happy I invested months of my life giving my own internal peace away to some random person without a profile picture with zero followers hating on my page. <laughs> like there's no time like ever, ever, ever mm. that I will be stoked that I invested my time and attention, the most precious thing we can ever give anybody, which is like yeah. our present yeah. into um, continuing the cycle of hate. And so being mm. that pattern interrupter and being like, I'm actually not going to react to this mm. while also simultaneously what you said, there's an important part of that of going, Hey, the way I grow is constructive feedback Mm. and sometimes when we have such uh, transparent lives and we share our stories and we share something that's inspiring to us in the moment but maybe actually we didn't think that it could have harmed or impacted a a culture or something negatively Mm. there's time for being like self-reflective that's positive feedback I'm going to shift my approach and do better moving forward I did the best I could with the awareness that I had but I resonate as the blind spot so there's a discernment of somebody's just being like Hey, bro, I just want to invite you into this perspective. This could be, you know, some constructive feedback as opposed to just being like... It's a totally different energy though, right? (laughs) When you feel people spewing out hate and negativity compared to like people just checking in with you and wanting to support you to do better. That's a totally different type of energy, right? And I think we can all feel that. And sometimes when you start shining and you put yourself out there, it can be the people closest to you that have their own negative perceptions as well. And we have to also be mindful not to take on board other people, judgments that are around us. You know, sometimes it's our friends and family members that will put us down or, you know, as we start to let go of the old to create the new, they might feel a certain type of way because you're growing, you're changing. And some people don't resonate very um well to change, right? They like to keep things as they are. So as we grow as individuals and as people, sometimes it's the people closest to us that have the most amount of issue with that. But I think it's, again, it's just about trusting yourself and knowing yourself and knowing that when you're in right relationship with yourself and you're doing things from a place of pure intention, that ultimately that's the only thing that you need to be doing. And 
letting go of how other people perceive you and just letting go of the attachment to please others or to get it right all the time or to be seen in a certain light. If we can just let go of all of that and just show up authentically on a daily basis, then, you know, that's all we can do really, right? And then the rest will follow, you know, as one door opens, another door closes. So sometimes people are in your life for a certain season and sometimes they're not going to be in the next season and that's okay. That's a part of change. That's a part of growth. That's a part of evolution within this human experience, right? Letting go of the old to create the new. Not everyone can come with you where you're going. Sometimes not everyone is ready to do their own inner work and we see that a lot right now, right? As we're in this great awakening, as consciousness shifts on this planet, there is so much separation and bullshit within families, within friendships within the larger human family that we're navigating and it's a massive conversation but ultimately it starts with us doing the work on ourselves and knowing that that's where it's at that's all we can do you know and as we do that work within ourselves to heal generational patterns and to heal pain and trauma and things that we've experienced in our life and heal our relationship with ourselves in the past, we set ourselves free from all of that old way of being and we start to create more space and room to bring in unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And for some people, they're going to be ready for that and some people are not going to be ready for that and that's okay. Mm -hmm. There's no judgment. Everyone's on their own timeline. And we have to respect everyone's timeline because we don't know what is right for someone else. We can only know what is right for us in any given moment. And I think that's a part of ending the separation that we all, you know, navigate is just let go of the judgment and the criticism and the bullshit that we all experience on a daily basis and move into operating from our heart. And of course, it's easier said than done because there's so many triggers and there's so many things that can come up on a daily basis. But the more we are tapping into our own inner work and giving ourselves permission to feel it, to heal it, to let it go, to process all the bullshit that we've been through, the more we can lead from our hearts. And I think that is the place that we're all being called to as leaders on this planet right now to step into is to lead from the heart because that's when we end the separation and that's the only way we can do it, right? Is, and it happens in the, the micro and the macro moments and that's the game we're playing because the powers that be will always find a way to create division and divide us. And if we can be in our hearts and operate from that frequency, then that is where we can make the biggest impact. And that comes down to our daily choices and the way we're showing up. And so all the little moments and things that we're doing, and when people bring negativity our way and drama and hate and all the things, that's a moment where we get to put that into practice. And it gets to be more than just a concept. It gets to be a way that we choose to live on an everyday basis. And that's the game that I want to play. And am I going to get that right all the time? Absolutely not but I'm going to do my best fucking job to do what I have to do to lead from my heart. We talked about this earlier around like, by the way, PS, I love it when you go into like wisdom channels. I just sit there and I'm like, I'm just going to recline right back where I just give this, this, this wisdom that is coming through Lucas Max right now, some space to breathe. Um, we we're talking earlier about death, mm. physical death. And when somebody dies close to us or, um, yeah, that, that, that is in our immediate reality, it really puts into perspective what's important, mm. right? Yeah. Like what is, what is actually the thing that stays and lasts here um, on this planet after we passed? And from your perspective, what do you think is the most important? If you were to build an altar right now and you were to put like – your prayer for what is most important on the altar. What would you place on that altar as the most important um, aspects of being alive from your perspective? Mm. I think it's different for all of us. My personal connection to what you're speaking on is to leave this place better than when I came in. And I can only honestly do my part. We're playing a long-term game here. Like when we talk about healing, healing generational trauma and pain, that's a long-term game, but I am here to do my part. So for me, it's about creating positive impact and being on purpose. 
And I want to know that when it's all said and done that I've showed up and given 100% of my energy to be able to, you know, play my part, play my role at, you know, creating positive impact on this planet. And I know for other people, they'll have a a very different uh, answer to that question. But for me, I'm really mission focused. And a part of being so mission focused is just to honor that that's my truth. Like I really am here to play a big game. I'm not here to dim my shine. I really am not inspired by sitting on the sidelines. I want to be in the game and just, you know, do my best to create positive impact. And that's why you see me out here working with influencers and celebrities and athletes because they have the audience, they have the reach, you know, and my my goal from day one was always to make inner work dope, to normalize it so the next generation can feel connected to this work because from a long time, you know, for me growing up, being interested in spirituality and intuition and all these things that we tap into on the daily, it was so like fringe and out there and weird. And I guess for a lot of young people growing up, when they see their favorite celebrity or athlete doing breath work or meditation or working on themselves, it's such a huge permission slip for them to do the same and to normalize the work. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm all about. And I get so much judgment from that. And I know that you do too, Blue. You know, people don't understand it. They don't see what we're doing. They don't know the bigger game that we're playing. But we are out here on a mission. And yeah, the mission is like such a beautiful, beautiful blessing just to be able to be here and to serve Mm -hmm. and to create this positive impact, you know, moment by moment. So It's one of my new favorite things is um, being in spaces that you wouldn't typically find us. Um, in environments uh, surrounded by high impact individuals and you and Hella showing up and me from across the room and catching eye contact I'm like oh we meet again brother mm. <laughs> we've come and we've been gravitated to this space from a series of different experiences we weren't together being like bring us in we're a part of a team no. it's just we've been orbiting in our own realities and mm. making our own connections and being in a deep level of listening of where the medicine is needed and when we ask the question please spirit use me for the greatest good in the service of the whole mm. Let me get out of my own agenda and my own plan and allow myself to transcend my will into thy will for the greatest service of all. Yeah. We end up in very interesting scenarios. Mm. We end ourselves in places and we're like, hey, bro, we're back at it again. Okay. And infiltrating from the inside out um, by being the medicine and not needing to prove anything, but recognizing many, 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 many small decisions based from a place of embodiment have led us in these positions. And when I see you in Hala, for me, it's confirmation that that space is exactly where I'm supposed to be. Now, my higher self always knows I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be in every given moment. However, sometimes getting caught up in the rapture of just what's present can easily just have just even a moment of question of being like, what's my role in this space? Yeah. But when I see you both, it is that instant confirmation. Oh, this is exactly where I'm meant to be. If, if those two and the universe has placed them in this space mm. and... For me, when I witness high impact individuals with you guys in their corner, I start feeling my nervous system relax for having children in the future because I'm actually seeing in real time that there are people that I trust the integrity of the way that they choose to walk through the world are whispering in the ears or are in the embodiment in the presence of those that are impacting millions of people. Mm. So I start to feel what once was oil and water where they just didn't mix. There was the spiritual world and then there was the impact world, but they did not go together. I'm actually starting to watch the merging happening in real time where Mm. I think, okay, I actually have hope in the direction that we are moving in as opposed to being bombarded with negative news of division, which is the, 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 the agenda of separation. Actually, in, the, in my immediate reality of what I'm seeing, I'm starting to see where once was oil and water actually merging for the healing of, of, of them all. Yeah. And for the healing of everyone involved. Yeah, we are here, baby. This is it. We're here to change the game. You know how we do it. 
In in the in the words of Lucas Mack, I fuck with that. Mm, I fuck with that. <laughs> yeah, and that's about following our intuition moment to moment, right? And leading from that place of trusting our intuition and trusting the process, and getting out of our own way to be of service, mm. which is a big thing because a lot of people don't trust their own inner voice enough to take action on it. You know, it, it can be scary for a lot of people to lead from that place of being ch- attuned to their intuition. Mm. You know, and I think that's something that we all do so well mm. because of our daily practices, because of the inner work that we do, you know, and showing up and listening and then taking action mm-hmm. from what we're feeling and sensing and bringing through. And that leads us to create, to co-create many opportunities and synchronicities and to open doors which were once shut. We are able to open those doors and say yes and walk through those doors because we're listening to our intuition. And not just that, we're following through and we're taking action on it. You mentioned earlier about ego death. Mm. And I think that this is a very like common phrase within, not that I want to label it, but like the spiritual community or the community of people asking the deeper questions. Um <clears throat> From somebody that is new to that concept of an ego death, Mm. from my personal experience, I feel like because it's a long-term healing, like you said, it's been 10 years where you've been rewriting the internal narrative. I think that we go through many, many ego deaths in this lifetime. It's actually the shamanic cycle of like the death, purification, rebirth, integration. And then we go through like almost like the seasons that are on, you know, the planet. I would love from your perspective, um, what is an ego death? Mm-hmm. And um, because I feel like some people may be in one that they don't understand the context and so can grasp or distract or avoid or suppress what is actually naturally coming up because we just don't have any healthy influence around us in our immediate environment that is reflecting the context of what is actually happening. So Mm. I feel like the collective is going through a collective death and then individuals everywhere I look, whatever isn't serving is dying, is Mm. falling away. And so if you could just give your perspective on an ego go death experience and what would that feel or look like Mm. well this is quite an esoteric topic but to ground it down in order to create the new you have to be willing to let go of the old and that comes down to how you're showing up on a daily basis and your belief systems and your internal programs and your relationship to yourself and the past and what's going on for you right now. And is that all in alignment with the future that you want to create? Or is there parts of you holding you back from actually creating what you want? And oftentimes we'll find ourselves in an inner conflict between two different parts where one part might be on board with a vision or a goal or something that we want to do, say calling in a relationship or getting into the best shape of your life or wanting to create success in your career. And there'll be another part of us that is not on board with that and might be self-sabotaging and holding us back or looping us in behaviors that don't align with the results that we actually want. Mm -hmm. So in order to create the new, you have to be willing to let go of the old, which means facing off with the more primitive parts of yourself that have kept you safe for a long time using strategies that once worked that now are not in alignment. So letting go of old coping mechanisms, old ways of being, maybe letting go of relationships, letting go of a career, letting go of people in your life that aren't actually in alignment with what you say that you want. Now, this can be extremely painful. This can feel like your whole world is collapsing because on some level it is. You're letting go of the old to create the new. Now, this is going to be different for every single person depending on what they're navigating and what they're going through. Trusting the process is easier said than done. But know that as you step in to really giving yourself permission to trust the process, You are making space day by day to step in and to claim what you actually want. And it comes down to the way that you're showing up on the daily, down to your little things like your routines, how you perceive yourself, the stories and narratives that you're telling yourself, the things that you're giving energy to, the things that you're investing your time and money into. And once you start to look at all of the things that aren't 
that are no longer in alignment and you start to renegotiate those things, question those things, and embrace letting go of the things that no longer serve you, you step bravely and courageously forward into creating the new and claiming what you actually want. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful process. And like you said, there's many seasons that we all go through when it comes to ego deaths. And it's something that we all have to experience and we all have to go through at some point in our life. And the key is to embrace it. The more that we try and control it, the more that we hold on, the more that we grasp, the more painful it gets. Mm -hmm. The more that we can surrender, the more that we can let go, the more that we can embrace what is happening is happening for our highest good. It's happening for our own alignment of what we say we truly want, that life, the universe, God is rearranging our reality to gift us what we actually want, knowing that life will only often gift us what we feel worthy of receiving. In that moment, we just have to surrender and know that we are worthy of receiving what we actually want. Life is rearranging everything and it, life is working in our favor. favor. And it's obviously a process of feeling all the feels as we go through it. And, you know, the feels are deep. The feels are mm -hmm. a part of letting go. I feel like no one is su like subjective to, or like not going to experience this at some point in their life. Like an identity death of what we think that we are to make room for what we actually are beyond yeah. the mind and into the heart, into the body, into a somatic level of truth. Yeah. Um, I recently... I feel like I'm finally coming up for air on the other side of another ego death. Yeah. Um, inadequacy, unworthiness, rejection. Like it was like mm. boom, boom, boom. And it's almost like when inside in, in tarot, it's known as the tower card. It's where literally like in the picture on the card is like there's a tower and it's on fire and people are jumping out of the side of the tower because they'd rather risk their lives and maybe survive if they jump out than be burnt alive inside of the building that is crumbling into ashes. And ultimately it's pretty like intense visual, mm. but also you're listening to this and you know because you've come through an ego death or two yeah. you'll know when you're like on the floor and feeling like like you're like on the ground and they could it get any worse and then it does mm. and it's like you get kicked in the ribs while you're on the floor and it's like oh mm. and um, it, we all have different ways of navigating the ego death, whether it's needing to be surrounded by people or just not wanting to speak to anybody at all and being able to just move through it. The one thing that has supported me in this process, and it's something that Richard Rudd, one of my mentors, shared with me is that the upgrade is only available on the other side of softening. Mm. So what I mean by the upgrade is the iOS system, the hard mm. drive that is going through, it's like a computer that is going through a virus scan. Mm. It's like scanning for viruses. Oh, de detected four viruses. Mm. Must like rewrite the program mm. so that this whole software can go for an upgrade. Mm. And um, that is essentially what an ego death is based off of a computer terminology is that there's a virus in the system that is actually consciously or subconsciously draining life force energy that could be used to be of service. So if you're sitting in front of your altar or you're sitting at your breathwork practice and going, spirit, use me for the greatest good of all. I'll do whatever it takes. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I'm just going to tell you, you've got four viruses in your system. It's yeah. draining your vitality. And that could be used for 25% more impact with your service to the planet. Yeah. So we're going to bring you to your knees. And the only way mm. to actually go through the update of the, the computer system is down, in, and up. Yeah. So it's down into the very belief system. So for example, one of the viruses is mm. that I am unworthy of love. Mm. Then Q... <laughs> Mm. person you love immensely rejecting you mm. because only then from the inside of the wound and we soften in that moment 
is when the virus gets removed and the updated information of the truth that you're inherently worthy just by being born yes. gets replaced instead of the program. Yeah. Yeah. But the death has to happen. Mm. Death, then we purify. Mm. Um, death, purification, rebirth, then we reborn into a new narrative mm. and then we integrate it through mm. the routine moments of the brushing your teeth to the making the bed to the yeah. drinking, your, making your morning cacao and, and to doing the breath work. These many small decisions is an opportunity to integrate the upgrade of the computer system. Yeah, and I feel like collectively so many people struggle with not feeling good enough and not feeling worthy. It's huge. It's huge. And for me on a personal level, I didn't feel good enough growing up. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this conversation, my father taking his life, I internalized because often it's not what happens to us. Well, there's what happens to us and then there's, the, there's the meaning that we place upon it, right? Mm -hmm. So the meaning that I placed upon it was I am not good enough. I am not good enough for my father to stick around, you know, and that's a core wound that many of us struggle with. And these childhood wounds that we go through, you know, of just around feeling unworthy is something that when we bring our attention and our light and our healing to, to transform it, we really set ourselves free and we create so much deep, 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 deep healing that goes beyond ourselves. You know, these are generational patterns that we're really unwinding and bringing healing to that we don't even know what the ripple effect of that can do when we heal our relationship to ourselves and we remember that we have always been worthy and that we are good enough. And just like you said, just because we are born on this planet, that we are worthy. And when we can really know that and embody that, and then we can move from that place of embodying it and feeling tapped into it and that being our reality and not just a concept, but something that we embody, then we are truly free within ourselves mm -hmm. to do whatever the fuck we want to do. And, you know, other people's judgments and projections and limitations and fear and negativity cannot touch us, baby, because <laughs> we have set ourselves free internally and then we get to walk this earth based you know, on the idea that we are walking in a simulation and we have set ourselves free from the matrix and from all of that fear and internal programs that once held us back and no longer does. So something that you just said there that really sort of stands out to me around the archetype or the in essence of being unfuckwithable. Mm. I think that we are totally fuckwithable when we live from validation from the outside in. Yeah. We become unfuckwithable when the validation lives from the inside out. Yeah. And that's the differentiation is in a world of distractions, in a world of social media, in a world of validation based off of the little red heart that you get or the followers or the likes or the comments from each post, then that is subjective to change. And if we know our sense of self based off of how the world reflects us, which could be a projection of an incorrect wound mm -hmm. of unworthiness, and then all of a sudden partner separates from us or um, so-and-so doesn't text back or um, mm. the post that you posted completely flunked and no one saw it or whatever. Mm. It's, it means that peace is constantly in flux like the ocean mm. and we're at victim of something that's completely vastly unpredictable. Yeah. However, when it's sourced from within, whether partner stays or goes, whether... Um, we are hated online or loved, whether mom and dad says X, Y, or Z, that sense of self is so deeply rooted in the earth that yes, when the wind blows, the tree may move, but it doesn't get uprooted. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And knowing your why is huge, right? When it comes to stepping out in the world and being of service and sharing your gifts with the world and your creativity and your authentic expression and all of those things being connected into your why because when you have a clear defined why then you are unfuckwithable mm -hmm. and you know when you are of service that means getting out of your own way and when you're of service it's not about what I can get it's about what I can give mm -hmm. and from that place it's a totally different way of operating and you you care less about what other people think about you and have to say because it's not about you. It's not about you. You've stepped, you know, off the sideline to play a bigger game, 
to be here for the greater good of what wants to happen and you're just doing your part Mm -hmm. and from that place, you know, you get to do it, have fun doing it Mm -hmm. and that's the best place to be, right? Mm -hmm. I saw a post from Aubrey today and he was like, doing the things that I love to do and would I still do those things if I didn't get paid for them? You know, he said something like that and he was like, how yes to doing this and not getting paid for it. You know, that was the... And then he threw in a cheeky hashtag that said paid in full. <laughs> yeah, paid in full. <laughs> and, and that's for me has always been the mission. It's not about the money. It's about the impact. It's yeah. about feeling alive when we're doing these things, feeling really tapped in and motivated and inspired by the work and what we're here to do. Whether that's, you know, your creativity or expressing yourself, your voice or making music or channeling or, you know, in the healing arts or working on anything that really inspires you or motivate, motivates you and sharing your unique gifts with the world, knowing that the world needs your unique expression and your unique gifts. And that's one of the greatest gifts that you can give to the world is just being your authentic self and sharing your gifts with the world, which is ultimately not about you, but you get to experience and live through that Mm -hmm. and and get to play and have fun with that, which is such a blessing. Mm -hmm. The um, unfuck, uh, the unfuck with the ball, even talking about that word, it brings up a memory, which... (laughs) It was so funny. We were sitting in a circle, I think, and we were all going around sharing our intentions for the full moon or whatever it was. And um, we were talking about the essence of Unfuck With Ball. And one of the sisters grabs the talking stick and she's like, my intention from this point forward is to be completely unfuckable. <laughs> and everyone was like, eh? <laughs> You sure that's the spot you want to put up there? <laughs> because it got one syllable missing and we've got a completely different intention. Yeah. But I don't think this is what you mean. And then she was like, why is everyone laughing? And then we were like, um, you know, you just, I don't know, on a full moon in a circle of sisters, set the intention that you want to be completely unfuckable. <laughs> yeah. So that was a bit of a tangent. It wasn't really giving much credit to the wisdom that you just poured, but I had, to, I couldn't miss this opportunity to just share this well, story. Sometimes we put out so things funny. to the universe that we don't actually want, yeah. right? And that goes full careful circle. Careful what you to wish me. for, babe. Careful what you wish for, and that goes full circle into me. You know, unwillingly practicing black magic on myself from a seven-year-old kid looking at myself in the mirror, really identifying with everything negative that I could sense and see about myself, putting that out to the universe, putting that out, you know, Mm. on that level. And then that was the reality and the perception and the lens that I saw myself through. And many of us are unwillingly and unconsciously doing that every day Mm. in little ways, whether it's comparing ourselves to other people or that inner critic or that inner voice, you know, that we let lead the show that's just negative and it's, it's not empowering. And I think one of the keys that we can all do on... A, you know, on a daily basis is just to practice deeper connection, deeper self-love, you know, our connection to being our own best friend, being our own coach, being our own mentor, and really showing up in a way that we'd want other people to show up in terms of speaking to ourselves, how we'd want others to speak to us. And you know, if we're speaking to ourselves in a negative way, would you speak to like speak like that to your younger self? Would you speak like that to a child? Because ultimately that's what you're doing. You know, you're speaking so harshly to to your younger self, to your inner child, and your inner child is feeling all of that, you know? And I think many of us, if we can reframe things and look at things differently and we can really show up from a place of unconditional love and practice that, and it starts in the mirror, right? starts in the mirror. Every day we get to look at ourselves in the mirror and we get to, you know, challenge that relationship from a place of unconditional love. And I think that's a beautiful place for every single person to start. So maybe today or tomorrow when you're brushing your teeth and you're looking yourself at the mirror, practice unconditional love by treating yourself with kindness, with compassion, telling yourself the things that you love about yourself, the things that you're proud about, Mm -hmm. you know, practice that on a daily basis and watch your relationship with yourself start to change because Mm -hmm. it's an inside job, baby. It's an Mm -hmm. inside job. Mm -hmm. Big time. There's nothing like someone actually like sort of walking into my bedroom while I'm yelling in the mirror, you are a bad bitch. (laughs) Who's a bad bitch? You are a bad bitch. And someone walks in and I'm like, oh, hey, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. My my, my things are over there. Yeah, Uh, I'll be down in a second. (laughs) 
Yeah. I'm just uh, yelling at myself in the mirror how much of a bad bitch I am. No, but for real, I just bought a book um, called Mirror Work by Louise Hay, who Let's also- um, She's the OG. Uh, yeah, oh, she's the OG OG. This yeah. is before like it was even like the, a fad or a thing yeah. or like the new age movement or whatever of like this uh, epidemic of self-love that is hitting mm. a world near you. Um, yeah. Louise Hay was like the OG Mama Hubba of like writing mm. books that you can heal your, heal your life and like Mirror yeah. Work and so I just got the the book and I'm now following her prompts. So in the morning when I'm, you know, definitely not looking my finest and my hair looks a little bit like all over the place and I mm, I uh, I just find those moments are the moments, mm. the little sweet spot where I'm just going to go, <laughs> you're a bad bitch, Blue, mm. and I love you so much. Yeah. Um, Louise Hay has a little bit more of an eloquent way of delivering some affirmations in the mirror. But if mm. you are interested in mirror work by Louise Hay. Yep, affirmations, baby, all day, every day. That's <laughs> what we do. That's what yep. we do. So we're <laughs> twisting that dark magic and yep. we're turning it into light magic and we're sharing it with the world through basically first and foremost yep. infiltrating it yep. into every And then part we get to being. shine that kindness out. Remember, the world needs more kindness. So it starts with us, right? We've got to practice what we preach. So practice being kind and compassionate to ourselves and then we get to show up with to others you know and bring that kindness and compassion on a daily basis and the world needs more of that y'all so let's For real. let's get busy let's do this this is the <laughs> the mission that we're on it is and i'm feeling your fire and it's pumping me up and i'm going to go make out with myself in the mirror after this <laughs> For real, no. Um, <laughs> like, there's so much smudges all over your mirror, Blue. I'm like, I did have a makeout session with myself and it was hot. Yeah. Um, I I just had uh, Chelsea twerk at me, um, which mm. means that we are at our ding, 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 yeah. ding, um, which I'm really grateful for uh, at, at this point with Chelsea over the side of the uh, of the podcast set, um, twerking at me, letting me know that that's when we're at our yeah. time. Um, this is the kind of environment I want to be in, you know? Of course. And uh, Lucas yeah. Mack, first and foremost, like you're just a legend and I absolutely adore you. Every time I'm around you and somebody, and you're walking off doing you know, going off doing something, I'll nudge whoever is interested in hearing how much I adore you. And I'm like, by the way, that kid over there, real deal. <laughs> like, I just like, I have to let people know, even though they probably already know themselves. Um, and so I'm now going to like publicly blast it on the Deja Vu podcast, Lucas Mack, real deal. Hello Weston, his partner, real deal. It's such a gift and a pleasure and a privilege to be able to share your wisdom, to have you in this conversation. These kind of conversations with, with you happen just when there aren't mics around. And so it feels really good to be able to capture the gold that is mm. coming from you and to be able to actually share it far and wide. Um, so thank you so much. Thank if you, people homie. are really love resonate, you. Huh? Yeah, love you. Ah, yeah. The most love. <laughs> um, if people are really resonating with your message and your essence and who you are, which they most mm. likely will be, um, how can they follow you, find you on social mm. media or online so that they can continue mm. to follow your journey? Yeah, so Hala and I are the co-founders of Awaken Breathwork. So you can go on social media on Instagram or Facebook or our website, which is Awaken with an O, O-W-A-K-E-N, uh, Awaken Breathwork. And you can find my own personal um, IG through there. So. Amazing. Thank you, brother, for being here. Thank you. I'm so grateful for who you are and your mastery at emotionally alchemizing everything into curriculum, from curriculum to gold, and forgiving the world and forgiving everything that's ever happened and alchemizing it into beauty. It's such a rare gift and it's such a pleasure to be able to continue to weave with you in the most unexpected and yet also like feels like aligned with the mission spaces mm. and I'm excited for where life wants to take us from this point forward. Let's yeah. go. Let's go. Bro. <laughs> To all of you beautiful humans, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Deja Blue. If you resonate to with today's episode, then please go ahead and share it on your Instagram stories because I can only reach so many people. Lucas can only reach so many people, but it is a combined effort recognizing that the message is not actually anything about our individual character, but more so the message of how it can impact those that maybe resonate with what it is that has been shared today and be able to infiltrate it into their lives to be able to create a more empowered reality. So um, I am excited 
excited to see where this podcast episode wants to go and all of the places and hearts and minds that it wants to touch. And thank you so much for your support in spreading the message. So until next week, making sure that you are speaking so dearly to yourself in the mirror, loving on that reflection and actually starting to create the little sweet in-between moments to be laced with a deep level of self-love because from that place, this is where all of our service is born. Sending you so much love and until next time. Today's sponsor of this podcast is Becoming Prosperous, which is a four-week online self-guided course aligning you with what it truly means to live a prosperous life. So if you want to check out the link in the show notes here on YouTube and also on all podcasting audible platforms.